Yeah, no, PVC is something you find in Lowe's. PCP is something you find behind the dumpster at Lowe's. Oh, YouTube is here. They're recording. I gotta go. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Use the link in my description to get two months free of Skillshare Premium. More about them later. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the only YouTube channel on YouTube where people stand and talk about stuff. Today I'll be standing and talking about five tips and tricks to help you shoot better videography. <laughs> Okay, that's better. Okay, tip number one, lighting. Very important how you use and shape light. If we had no light, there'd be no life, which ultimately means there'd be no videography. But also in the videography realm, if we had no light, that we wouldn't also have videography. What, what the heck are you talking about? Videography is basically painting with light. Just shake off the excess. And beat the devil out of it. So depending on how you use that light to paint your image, it's gonna affect the outcome, obviously. No way. Now I use a lighting setup like this a lot, and the way we do it is we have a soft box coming down a little bit at an angle. We have a rim light with a gel on it lighting up the side of his face in the back, and I also use a little kicker light to light up the backpacks in the background. Simple. Another great source of light are windows. Window lighting can be re Window lighting done well can give you a super dramatic look. For the This for example was lit by one big Come on, Ron, you got this. Just say the words. Say the words! Another great source of lighting is window lighting. Using the... <laughs> this shot was only lit by the available light we had coming through the window. But I knew where to place that subject to get the most out of that light. If I had him at a different angle or if I had him in front of the window, it wouldn't have looked as good. So keeping your eye out for some good window light and knowing where to place people can give you some really good results. And that brings me to lighting option number three, the sun. The sun is a deadly laser. You can utilize that big ball of burning hydrogen peroxide and nuclear missiles formed by the Nazi Germans to get some really cool looks for your video. And a great supplement to that is one of the, ow. One of these guys. A nice diffusion panel can get you a really great look outside. And these are like really, really cheap for what you get. You get like a reflector, another reflector, and a diffusion. All in one, baby. It's a mega deal. <laughs> but these can transform your shot from looking like this to this. I've left a link to a really cheap one down below. Speaking about cheap, dad, I love you. Now, it's good to have the best lights you can, but just starting off, that's not usually the easiest thing to do. When I first started out, I was using clamp can lights from, wow, try saying that six times fast. Clamp can lights, clamp can lights, that, that, that. ADHD is a chronic medical condition of the brain. Clamp can lights, clamp can lights. Clamped can lights from Home Depot. And I use parchment paper as diffusion or a pillowcase or something like that. I think it really helps creativity when you start with using something minimal and trying to get the best look out of that. Uh, I screw that up. Rather than jumping all in at once. No, oh, no, there it is. No, I hate myself. Rather than jumping all in at once to something that you don't know anything about. Another good option is DIY. Daniel Schiffner, Schiffer, Schiffer, Clipper, LA Clippers. Daniel LA Clippers has a great tutorial about how to make your own DIY light pan. And you can put some diffusion over that and it gives you a really similar look to a softbox. I left a little button in the description below that you guys can click and it'll take you right to that video. You won't see that kind of technology or advancement anywhere else on YouTube, so you're welcome. Another great way to utilize the outdoor light that Jesus gives us Jesus is the brand. Is by shooting at golden hour. Golden hour. Golden corral. Hurry to golden corral. Shooting at golden hour is like the best time ever. It's the best day ever. Because you put in minimal effort and get like the tastiest looking shots ever. Yeah. So it's pretty, it's pretty dang, it's pretty dang dope, fam, squad fam. But if you don't have one of these and you're too lazy to wait for Golden Corral, <laughs> Golden Hour, and you're shooting in the bright daylight, try finding some shade or an area where you don't have direct sunlight hitting your subject. That'll help out a lot. Well, no dip, Sherlock. <laughs> Number two, sharpening. This one's easy. Turning off internal sharpening in your camera. I usually like to set mine to around zero, negative one. This way it doesn't give you that cheap camcorder sharpening look, and you get to maintain some of the finer details that you will capture in your frame that would otherwise be obliterated by the in-camera sharpening. <laughs> so once you import your footage, just add some post sharpening to that and it'll look tasty clean. Another great sharpening tip, around F4 with any lens is about the sharpest image you're gonna get. Now obviously F4 doesn't give the best bokeh for most lenses, but with wider lenses where I'm not so much concerned about the bokeh, I like to crank that aperture down so I get the sharpest looking shot possible. Number three, music choice. Music choice is really, really important because it can make or break your project. The biggest mistake I see is people putting dramatic music or hype music over something that shouldn't really be dramatic or hype. Take this for example. Now 
Now it's not like those shots are bad and it doesn't necessarily mean that music is bad. It just means that music with those shots is bad. That music would really complement something else with a lot more drama going on. But if we were to pick the correct music, something like this, we get a much more professional feel just from the music choice. Sticking on the topic with sound, number four, sound design. If you watch any of my videos on Instagram, you know I'm a huge fan of sound design. It really helps to immerse the viewer into the universe that you've created. That sounded like some really deep stuff. I'm not, it, it sounds good. There, that's better. So take a look at this sequence, for example, with no sound design. <laughs> Okay, so it's cool, it's whatever, but let's see how much more cooler and how much more whatever -er -er it is when we add some tasty little sound bites and sound design elements to it, bruh. That's tasty. So you can see adding sound design like that really helps the professional grade of the sequence. Being hypersensitive to what sounds you want to add while doing sound design really helps too. Obviously we're going to add in what everybody would expect. The city noises, the birds, the people walking. But it's the little things like the fizz of the soda opening. The sound when he grabs the glass. The sound of the foghorn near the Statue of Liberty. Or the little sound I added in for when he is holding the newspaper. All those really things. What? All those things really elevate the production of the sound design. Oh, are we talking about audio and sound design and music and sound and audio and filmmaking? Wow, what a perfect transition and segue into my sponsor bit. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is like that one uncle that you have that knows everything about everything. It's an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. You can explore classes in everything from photography to film, to freelance and entrepreneurship, web development, music, etc. And with a premium membership, you get unlimited access to all of that, plus way more high quality classes from experts working in their fields to help you gain new skills and live your best life. That not that swell? Skillshare is also incredibly affordable. You can get all this with an annual subscription that comes out to less than $10 a month. Now, I've always been interested in creating my own music for my videos. So the past week, I've been checking out film scoring techniques for The Modern Composer by Jason Allen. It's an extensive series that touches upon the creativity of film scoring as well as the theory. A good mixture between the two that I'm finding. It's both entertaining, educational, and something that'll help me add another tool to my toolkit of filmmaking. So go ahead and click the link in my description to get two months of Skillshare Premium free by using the code ORION2. Numo Unero 5. Transitions. Now, transitions used correctly can really enhance the flow of your video or the story that you're trying to tell. In my case, I like to use speed ramping for a lot of my transitions. Very rarely will I use a lot of slide or zoom or glitch or any of those preset transitions. I do love me some of those and they're tasty when used correctly. But if we're just to put a zoom transition over something like this, It doesn't really serve a purpose other than, oh, we really wanted to use a zoom transition. Use it tastefully and when it makes sense. Transitions that I like to use a lot are in-camera transitions. When I was shooting, I was getting a lot of light leak into the camera, so much so that it whited out the whole image. So I paired that clip with a light overlay to transition into my next clip, 
rather than using a zoom whip or anything like that, I used what naturally was occurring in camera and enhanced that a little bit with an effect. Again, if you watch any of my videos on Instagram, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of using speed ramping as a form of transitions too, matching movements and motion to help match those two clips together. It's a really natural and pleasing transition. See what you can use around you to act as a transition. A mask transition is a really great natural one as well. Going behind an object and masking it out to reveal the next shot. So play around with those different techniques of transitions and leave the plugins in their box. Say F you to society and use your own gosh darn transitions that you make yourself. Yes! But if you are looking for some great transitions, I link some down below. Ryan Angle has amazing packs that I use all the time when it makes sense. All right, guys, that was five tips and five tricks mashed together into one to create five still, because when you put five and five together, it's still five. See, I put five and five together, it's still five. You were smart. Leave a like down below if you liked it. Leave a dislike down below if you didn't like it. Or if you don't like Daniel Schiffer, leave a dislike. Ha. But if you didn't like this video, subscribe. Gotcha. Bet you didn't see that one coming, did ya? And uh, if you have any questions, don't bother to ask. Um, I don't care. Follow me on Amazon. Follow me on eBay. Yep. Sayonara.